Good morning, everyone. Today has been quite the day. In today's video, I'm gonna be answering some questions and assumptions about myself, but first I need to tell you what's been going on. So first of all, last night, Charlie had some of her friends stay the night, and I felt really bad because my AC literally just stopped working. Just, no. It was 82, 83 degrees all night long, and I was like, you know what, it's probably the filter, but everything was closed, so I can't go buy one, and I couldn't figure out how to open the thing. So then, this morning, I called maintenance, and they came and fixed it, and it dropped from 82 back down to like a normal, like. 70 degrees within an hour and we all slept like hot sweaty gross luckily we all took showers like cold showers last night then this morning my apartments turn off the water so no one could shower and we all felt gross so I used like a cup of water that I had to brush my teeth and wash my face um, they left to go look at apartments because they're moving here and me and Charlie went to the gym come back still haven't been able to shower I'm still wearing like my gym sports bra and shorts I just put on a nicer shirt for the video but I feel absolutely disgusting and sweaty so it's been an interesting day I'm sure you guys could hear a little commotion in the background so I think it's time to introduce you guys to someone. This is Phoenix. He is seven weeks old and he's absolutely adorable. <laughs> he is a little Bengal kitten. I'll go let him run around now. And he's not mine. I know a lot of you guys are probably like, why in the world would you get another pet? So let me just do a little bit explaining. My boyfriend has been wanting a pet. He was more so wanting a dog. And I told him I'm a big cat person. I'm not really a dog person. And he knows that I have been really sad about having to get rid of my two Bengal cats and giving them to my ex, my ex-husband. I somehow convinced him that if he was gonna get a pet, it should be a Bengal cat. He said, okay, well, if you can find me one, then I will get one. And I found him one. <laughs> So he got one. So it is his, but I kind of watch him a lot during the day because my boyfriend works nine to five, Monday through Friday. And then he mostly hangs out here anyway because my apartment is bigger. So Phoenix is not technically mine, but I kind of take care of him right now. He kind of is mine, but he's not mine if that makes sense. I told you guys and I told myself I would not get a pet until I knew I could take care of one for lifelong and it probably would be 10 years till I get a pet. So that is why I was like, I'm not getting a pet. This is not my cat. It is my boyfriend's cat. He wanted to get a cat. I convinced him to get a bangle. Not gonna complain there. Plus he knows I've been so sad about my cats. I literally show him pictures of my cats like once a week. And I'm like, I'm so sad that I don't have them. I was like, what if I just go steal them? Anyway, so he was like, let's get a pet together. It'll be my pet. I'll take care of it. I'll take responsibility. But you can still like play with it and help take care of it. So it's kind of our cat, which is like also kind of a big step in relationship to get a cat together. But it is technically his. <laughs> and I love Phoenix. He's literally just vibing. He's actually using the litter right now. <laughs> But I know a lot of people probably have questions about my old cats and why I got rid of them in the first place. I did make a couple videos about it, but I'll just re-explain here so we're all kind of on the same page. The reason I had to get rid of my cats is because I was moving across the country. I was moving into my friend's house that I really had met her once. It was Charlie. She's my best friend now, but we'd only met once and she was going to let me live with her until I could find a place to live. They had two dogs and my cats don't really get along with dogs. It would have been a very stressful situation for the cats. So I asked my ex if he wanted the cats and we never had really discussed who was going to get the cats because we kind of just separated. I was like, well, they are technically my cats. So I kept them. Then I reached out to him and I was like, I don't know if I can take the cats. Do you want the cats? And he has always been a really good cat dad to them and love the cats so he said that he could take them and so now he has them they're his cats so although I wish I could have kept them and I'm sure I could have figured out a way maybe have someone watch them for a month or two until I could find a place I'm sure I could have made it happen I kind of wish that I would have gone that route I definitely do I have a lot of regrets because I absolutely love Ace and Zora to death and I still sometimes will ask for updates about them because I they're, they're just they're always gonna be my babies in my heart but my ex took them so both the cats are still together living in you know his place with their dad so cool this cat phoenix is his name is not technically mine but i am taking partial ownership in my heart because i love Bengals. but it's been going so good so far he's so cuddly and lovey and playful he's just a little baby but yeah, I know I'm probably gonna get a lot of hate because people think I can't take care of an animal and I might have to agree that I should never be a sole owner of a pet, which is why I'm not the sole owner of Phoenix. He is my boyfriend's. So if for whatever reason, me and my boyfriend were to break up, don't see that happening anytime soon, Phoenix would go with him. Anyways, <laughs> 
I don't know why I have to explain myself. I like, I went through such a time of my life where everything was public. I got hate for everything and judged for everything I did that I'm pretty private now. But how can I hide a whole cat from you guys? Like that, I just, I'm not gonna do that. Where's my phone? Cause I was trying to do a little Q and A, but I don't know where my phone went. I think he's gonna be a shoulder cat. <laughs> he's so cuddly. Also with Phoenix, I obviously had to like tell you guys I had a boyfriend before I could say I'm hanging out and helping take care of my boyfriend's cat. So it all just kind of fell into place, I guess. <laughs> all right, let's get into the video now. Are you still doing your insurance job? I am not. Um, I hated that job. It was the worst thing ever. I'm sure some people like the job. I don't. Actually, some of my friends have been life insurance agents before and were like, yeah, I get why you don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> so I'm still just doing social media right now, but I've been thinking about just getting like a job that could be fun and get me out of the house. Am I still on birth control? I am not. I am fully free of hormones and it's been amazing not having any hormones in me. I hated birth control. It was one of my least favorite things I've ever done in my life. I have a lot of regrets about getting on birth control. Um, I wish I would have gone the natural family planning method from the beginning, but I didn't want any accidents um, But no, I'm birth control free. Uh, let me show you what I use actually now I will say I don't need this for the birth control Aspects right now if you get what I'm saying, but I use natural cycles It's this thermometer and this is a basal is that how you say it basal base. I don't know something like that temperature thermometer so it takes better temperature than just like a regular thermometer would. And I have to take my temperature as soon as I wake up. Like no snoozing, no like doing anything, not even checking my phone, not even like breathing or taking a drink of water. Wake up, put that thing in my mouth, take my temperature and I enter it into an app. And the reason that I decided to do this is one, because in the future I would like to be able to use birth control to be able to plan when I wanna have kids. And the sooner that I know exactly how my cycle works, the easier it's gonna be to get pregnant in the future. I also have been obsessed with just like um, uh, the way that women work in our bodies and our cycles and so I wanted to get this so that I could track my cycle really well. I've had irregular cycles pretty much my entire life since I started my period and so I really wanted to get a hold and feel like I have more control over it and then understand why my moods are going up and down and feeling certain ways and knowing what workouts I should do at what parts of the month because it literally tells me like when I'm gonna be on my period, when my hormones are spiking, when I'm ovulating. So it is a form of birth control. That's not really what I'm using it for right now but it's also just a way to track your cycle really well or if you're trying to have a kid it can tell you when you need to make the kid <laughs> when you're ovulating so that's what I use is my boyfriend Christian yes I answered that in the last video but he goes to church with me why are you getting remarried already I'm not I'm in a relationship I'm not engaged I'm not planning on getting married soon uh, just Taking it day by day, month by month, you know. What made me know I was ready for a relationship because I didn't have a lot of emotions or reactions to my ex, situations with my ex and all of that. I also was completely sufficient being alone and independent and all of that. And so I was like, okay, I'm probably open to the opportunity and then like, you know, I'm a Christian, so I always just trust God with everything. And if God giving me this, then I know that that's what he wanted for me. Hurt and dealing with trauma. Yes, I had to go through a lot of this. I went to therapy for a while and my therapist told me that I basically had PTSD and that's why I was suffering with so much depression and anxiety. And those can be PTSD symptoms a lot of times. And so I had to deal with that. And we did some crazy stuff, like writing down things from like as early as I could remember childhood, things that still affect me to today. And we had to do these like like breathing exercises and like hugging myself and it sounds weird but doing it with a therapist in a professional setting like I feel like really did help me through things also just surrendering a lot of that stuff to God and then also forgiveness has been a huge huge thing for me and my traumas and also learning how to set boundaries I am a huge believer in boundaries but I think those are the best tips I can give relationship slash friendship boundaries I think the best thing you can do within any sort of relationship romantic or not is always Always making sure that you have time alone and that you also have structured time together because like especially with like me and my roommate we could just sit around and always be together but then it might start to feel invasive so a lot of times we will try like hey let's go to the gym together let's go to top golf together let's go on a walk together let's go to the store together where it's like we can still do things alone we can just chill in our rooms we don't always have to be together so making sure we have that alone time and then also scheduling like friend dates and then that's kind of how I am with my relationship as well we don't always want to be together well we do want to but it's really important to have alone time have our separate you know careers and our time where we're not together just as important as it is to have scheduled dates and just time to hang out and watch movies together 
Oh my gosh, stop. He's so cute right now. And he moved. Okay, but he's like playing on this little ball I have. So that was a few of the questions that you guys were asking and now I wanted to just kind of read some assumptions about me that you guys had. I assume you'll get married again in the next five years. Honestly, that's, I wouldn't doubt that. Especially if me and my boyfriend work out and we keep dating, like, I wouldn't doubt it. How old am I now? 21, so I'd be 26. I would like to have kids by 25. I don't like putting a timeline on marriage, engagement, kids, but also like, I can't help but do it. I can get obsessive over those kind of dates though, so I really try not to. And then also, I'm the type of person that loves having something to look forward to, but then it makes me struggle to enjoy the moment. So I'm really trying not to throw timelines out there. You are closed off. I would say I'm definitely more of not so much an open book as I used to be. Something I actually really struggle with is oversharing on the internet. It's easier because I can just cut things out. But in real life, sometimes I really struggle to overshare and I've been working on that a lot because I don't think it's always appropriate, especially when trying to set boundaries with myself and with others. So I am a little bit more closed off than I used to be. I'm a lot more private about things and realize that everyone doesn't need to know everything about me. My parents don't even need to know everything that's going on. I think that's a huge thing that I struggled with for a while, especially going into adulthood. Like, what do I tell people? What kind of information am I allowed to keep to myself? And I realized I can keep everything to myself if I want to. And it's actually really comforting, relaxing, and less stressful to not tell everyone everything. I assume you're a little too religious. I actually am going to disagree on this. I think it depends on your definition of religious. To me, I think the word religious best describes people who adhere to a rule book and a rule system and listen to what they're told and do it. They like having a step-by-step -step of how to live this religious life. I don't agree with that. I think relationship over religion every single day. I have a sh very strong, great relationship with Jesus and that is why I talk about God all the time because he really has saved my life. Do I adhere to a certain rule book and do this, 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 and this and be super religious and I would say no. I mean, even Jesus, like the Pharisees were religious people and Jesus was like, don't do that. Religion takes the concept of God and makes it, I guess, easier for people to be like, hey, just do this, do this, do this, boom, you're good. But that's not how it's supposed to be. So I don't really agree with religion. Like I know people say Christianity is a religion and there definitely is a religion of Christianity, but then there's also just the relationship that you can have with Jesus that is not religious at all because we're all sinners. We all mess up, all right? So, I mean, like there's a verse that says, um, Everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. I think that's how it goes. I think that's like the best way to live as a Christian. Just always putting God at the forefront of your mind. And just remember that not everything's beneficial, but everything's permissible. It's your own personal convictions as well. So, but if you don't have that relationship with God first and you're not like, hey, am I supposed to do this? That's where you get into religion, when you're not asking God and putting him first, but putting the rules first. Like a lot of people will be like, oh, you're Christian, you follow the 10 commandments. It's like, no, I follow God. And by following God, I, what's the word? Sub, subsequent, subsequently, dyslexic person trying to use big word. <laughs> follow the 10 commandments. I hope that makes sense. Okay, I can rant about that all day long because I come from a very religious background. <laughs> I didn't know if I even wanted to touch on this topic. I know there's a lot of questions on here about intimacy. People want me to talk about like waiting till marriage again or not waiting till marriage again or what it was like in marriage or how it's been after. And I know it's like, it is can be a taboo topic that people don't want to talk about. And so you guys want me to talk about it and open up. But that is one of those things that I am very private about. And that is one of the regrets I, that I have from my previous relationship was being public about that because intimacy is intimate and I don't think it's anyone else's business and I never realized how weird it is to ask about other people's intimate life unless it's like a sister or best friend but not someone online until I was a little bit older where I am now so it's not really something that I feel 100% comfortable talking about I've had experiences that I don't really want to discuss <laughs> and I'm just gonna leave it at that now everyone can they probably won't, but please stop asking. <laughs> oh, should I do a controversial one? I think I've already made this pretty obvious on most of my social medias, but it is controversial. I assume that you're pro-life. I am very pro-life. I'm more so anti-abortion, I think is a better way to describe it. I could literally sit here and give a 40 million hour rant about why I'm pro-life, but I cannot change your opinion. So there's no point in arguing. Now you know my stance. I'm not in the business of controlling women's bodies, but I do believe in human rights. 
and a fetus is a human. It's just a very young human. And I could go off about these arguments because women can give birth at like 20 weeks and that baby can survive. Some women are getting abortions at 20 weeks, killing a human, a baby. I cannot stand for it. It is not women's rights. It is killing humans. And the second that we take away the value, the personhood of any human, race, religion, gender, sexual orientation, or age, fetus, we get into some hot water. So that is why I'm pro-life. Obviously I have my religious re reasons, but I never bring that into an abortion argument. I don't think it helps the argument. Um, I could link some stuff down below that describe my point better because this could literally be a 40 minute video, but yeah, that's where I stand. That being said, I try to be loving to people who do not agree with me. I have friends who are pro-choice. I have friends who completely disagree with me on a lot of things, whether it's religion or political issues or just controversial issues, and I am still friends with them. So that being said, I get it if you don't want to follow me anymore because of my stance, but I'm not judging you, I get it. I actually used to be someone who didn't know where I stood on the issue. I was very much in the middle. I used to be very in the middle about pretty much everything. And then I kind of had to grow up and dive into it and realize what is this? Is it a woman's choice? Is it women's rights? Or is that a human being? Science says it's a human. So anyway, continuing. You don't respect people with different views, especially different religion views. Ooh, that's a good one. I mean, I kind of just talked about that, but I foolheartedly think that you can think someone is wrong about something and not agree with them whatsoever. Such as, I do not think that any other religion is true. I wouldn't believe in Jesus if I thought that Hinduism, Islam, any other religion was true, then I would follow that religion. So you can think that someone is wrong and still get along with them and still respect them as a human being. I very much so value respect amongst humans. That doesn't mean that you have to agree or be okay with everyone's position on things, whether it's religion or just any issue. But I think we all need to come together as human beings and be like, hey, you're a human, I'm a human, cool. Am I perfect at that? Not always, but that is my philosophy that I try to follow. <laughs> okay, I don't even know how long I've been recording, so sorry if this video was really long, but I just had a lot to talk to you guys about, wanted to catch up and answer some stuff. Let me get Phoenix to say goodbye. So that's it for the video. Me and Phoenix say have a great day, a great rest of your week. We love you and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.